The next step on the service of the Outlander 800 is to get these clutches off and get them cleaned and put back on. Now, fairly easy, uh, if you're just going to tackle this without looking at a shop manual or anything, it's pretty easy to pull the cover off, um, grab some sockets, a wrench, and uh, start pulling the primary uh, and secondary off. But uh, this is where I kind of caution you. Um, if you're going to do this job, you need to do it right. You need to get the shop manual uh, with the proper specs, the, uh, the torque specs when you reinstall this stuff, the procedures, what to look for, what to inspect when you uh, do get the clutches removed. You need the mechanical tools, like your basic uh, sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers, things like that, and the knowledge how to use them. But you do need the specialty tools when it comes to clutches. You need the holders and the pullers, um, the proper tools to get these things off. If you don't, there's a good chance you're going to probably damage something, take them off, or uh, reinstalling them. Or even worse yet, you're going to have an issue on trail. Uh, you might get all this stuff uh, kind of cleaned and put back on, but there might not be a something torqued quite proper and you get back on trail and and something happens it's just going to cost you a lot of money out of your pocket and some grief and uh, things like that so if you're confident in doing this, this is going to be just a quick outline of uh, what to look for how, how i clean them how i inspect them but by all means if you're not uh, confident in doing this bring it into the shop find a good a good mechanic that you trust that uh, with your machine that's got some uh, skills some knowledge um good equipment and uh don't be scared to pay them, uh, uh, pay them to get the, your clutches serviced for you. Bring it into our local shop. We can definitely uh, get you looked after. Now you can see here, it, it, uh, I just pulled this uh, fixed half of this primary off with a puller and a breaker bar. Uh, made it look quite easy, but I did uh, take a little bit of time to set this up. Now, some guys will just take a little uh, impact uh, to the puller, screw the puller in and put this little impact to it and pop them off. Um, it isn't the correct procedure to do it. The correct procedure is actually to lock the crankshaft with a special locking bolt like you see here. Uh, you basically position the uh, engine at top dead center on number two, uh, install the bolt uh, so it locks the engine into place. And then that's what makes it easy where I can just screw the puller in, use the braking bar and pop this uh, primary off. Just again, another example of if you have the shop manual and the special tools, how easy this job really is. Now that we have the clutches off, let's have a quick look at the primary here right before we clean it. I'll uh, describe a few of the components that's going on. At first, on the fixed half here, basically the half that doesn't move, this comes right off the engine PTO, uh, you see the one-way bearing in here. And this, this is where this is a little different than a snowmobile clutch. And the one-way bearing basically allows the belt, uh, when you come off throttle, allows the belt to engage the clutch. And this is what it, uh, slows you down when you're not on the throttle and you're going downhill. Uh, next we have the primary spring and basically what I can tell you about this is the di different tension of the spring itself is what uh, caused the uh, the clutch to compress. So again these are tunable, uh, you can get different springs and different clutch kits and basically it's going to change the shift characteristics of your uh, ATV uh, whether you've got bigger mud tires or, or what have you on it. Next we get into the sliding half and the governor cup. And basically what we're looking for here is anything that's going to cause some friction. Of course, we want to get rid of all the grime and the uh, belt dust that might have built up in here. But we're looking for worn parts, uh, making sure all the rollers move uh, freely. And then same thing with the uh, sliding half itself. We want to look at all the levers in here and make sure that nothing's binding. And again, the little levers in here, they're all weighted and they're all tunable. Uh, the different weights, again, change the shift characteristics of the clutch and the ATV. Uh, and again, I do have a, a Dalton clutch kit into this uh, because I do run larger uh, mud tires on it. So basically I'm running a little lighter weight in here. So the clutch uh, compresses a little quicker, uh, spins a little quicker, and I get a little more top end RPM when I'm uh, in the mud uh, trying to get through with, uh, with big 30 inch uh, aggressive tires. So let's get into the secondary clutch here next. And again, same thing with the primary. We're looking for anything that's uh, worn or broken. Uh, and then we're going to get in and get everything cleaned up, all the belt dust uh, cleaned out of it. So again, we want to look at the spring, make sure that it's uh, still got good tension, that it's not broken. We want to look at the helix. And, uh, and basically where the helix meets into the secondary here, you can see that I'm starting to show some wear. If I check the service manual spec on this, I could be uh, very close to the service limit on it and should be replacing this soon. These clutches do have uh, quite a few miles on them.
Here we're looking at all the bushings, of course. Uh, make sure that there's that there, nothing's worn or chewed up in here and that uh, they're not too sloppy or they're not too loose. That, uh, again, all the shop manual specs on them, we can measure them and make sure that uh, they got the right fit to them. And then the clutch faces themselves. And again, with the primary and the secondary, you want to make sure everything's nice and smooth. You can see here, I do have a bit of a, an abrasion on this one here where a rock or something has gone through on the secondary. And I have actually tried to smooth this out uh, with some cloth, uh, some emery cloth. And basically, you don't want rough surfaces on your clutch because it's going to chew up your belts really quick. And uh, if you're wondering why, uh, why I might be uh, going through belts uh, quite often, this is a good example here where something's gone into the clutch and roughed up the edge. And they'll basically just chew up the belt under load. Now that we've had a good look at them, it's time to uh, clean them up, get rid of this belt dust that you uh, see on them. We don't want to have any binding issues. And if you service your clutches regularly, this isn't a big job. Um, if you do leave them uh, year after year and they get caked with mud and, uh, and debris, uh, you will be scrubbing for hours. But if you do service them regularly, this is a nice, quick, easy job. There's a few ways to go about doing it. Uh, Bombardier or BRP does make a pulley flange cleaner uh, that's specific for this. This is what you're going to read in the shop manual. And it's basically just like a, a brake clean uh, brake clean chemical and uh, it will clean uh, the aluminum and everything up really nice. Um, you can go as far as uh, use something like a rim cleaner, an aluminum cleaner to try to get some of the oxidization off the aluminum itself. That works really well. Uh, what I like to do is basically good old soap and water, hot soap and water, uh, soak the clutches, clutches, scrub them down with a, a scotch Bright pad. Um, first, I do maybe let them soak in a little bit of aluminum uh, cleaner just to clean them up a little bit. But uh, basically, yeah, get them all cleaned up. Uh, like you see here, just uh, with good old soap and water and elbow grease, get everything cleaned up nice. And then I, uh, I do give them a little bit of uh, a squirt of the flange cleaner the pulley flange cleaner afterwards, and uh, some compressed air. And I want to make sure everything's nice and dry. Get all the bushings nice and dry before I uh, reinstall everything. Get everything, uh, uh, just kind of one last look over, make sure I didn't miss anything with my inspection. And uh, yeah, basically the longer you take with this, the more meticulous you are, uh, the better your uh, clutch cleaning is going to come out. Again, don't forget here, guys, uh, it's nice to clean the, uh, the clutch cover itself. Uh, it gets... Uh, full of mud, uh, uh, debris, belt dust, uh, that type of stuff. So again, just a good idea to give it a quick clean. And don't forget about the belt. It's great to take your belt off if you want to get a good belt life. Uh, give it a good wash in the soap and water. Get it all nice and clean. Uh, check it for grooves. Uh, you can check the uh, width of it against the uh, service limit uh, sh the shop spec on it. And uh, yeah, you just get it all nice and clean, have a good look at it, and put it back on. There's nothing worse than breaking a belt on trail. Uh, just because you haven't looked at it for a while, uh, it can ruin your day uh, really quickly. So I have everything cleaned up and looking good. Time to reinstall the primary and secondary clutch. And this is probably where it's most important to have the proper, the proper specs from the shop manual, the proper procedures, the proper, proper tools. Um, and skills to do this. This is where kind of the damage can occur when uh, when you're reinstalling everything if uh, it's not torqued properly or uh, you know you might have missed a step that uh, BRP recommends. So again like I said you guys if you're not confident in doing this uh, bring it into the shop we can definitely get you looked after. But here you see me uh, uh, installing the, uh, the primary uh, torquing it to the proper spec and then same thing with the secondary. There's a certain procedure uh, for different models. Some of them are torqued at uh, 44 foot pounds. Some have a 180 degree turn to them. You do have to replace the secondary bolt, whether you use Loctite or not. You know, all these things are different on it. Uh, reinstall the belt onto it. And then the last step here is to put the cover on. And, and here again, this is where a, a lot of mistakes are made. Um, this cover, uh, the little bolts that, that bolt onto it to seal it up, uh, they thread into a brass insert into plastic and a lot of times you'll see guys that will over torque this uh, Trying to make sure that they're really tight and they'll end up stripping them out stripping the plastic out or cross threading the threads It's really important to use an anti-seize on this type of bolt This is just a little hint here to save you a little bit of trouble uh, If you ever pull this cover off use anti-seize on the bolt when you put it back on and they don't receive a lot of torque They're basically just snug up to this cover So guys, that's about 10 minutes talking about clutches and cleaning them and the proper way to do it. 
Um, I guess the big thing that I was trying to stress here is if you're going to attempt this job yourself, this maintenance procedure yourself, uh, come into your local shop, your local dealership, and pick up the shop manual, the tools, uh, get the, uh, the proper equipment and knowledge that you need to do this properly. Uh, and if you don't, if, you, if it's something that you don't want to do, well, this was a great little video to show you what we would do here at the shop uh, to get you set up, get your clutches serviced for the uh, riding season. So next step here, uh, we're going to get, we've got this all done, got the clutch cover back on. Time to have another good look at the engine oil, um, the gearbox oil, and the diffs. And I know uh, an engine oil change is pretty, a pretty basic thing, uh, pretty basic service procedure to perform. But uh, I'll show you a couple tricks here again, a couple problems that we see uh, going on when uh, when guys do uh, an engine oil change on the Can-Ams, on the, especially on the Gen 1 800 engines. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a little fun with this uh, and get this thing a little closer to, uh, to trail ready. So again, thank you guys and stay tuned.